What it's is just it? like a soccer mom with a cup of coffee, like looking so suspicious, like staring at the screen, like towards you, just like, yeah, she's a, she's a business soccer mom. All right, we're good. Ready to go. Got some fancy hardware. Okay. Yep. We're good. Okay. So, Hey everybody, we're back. This is the second time with Squilla about Elden Ring. Technically the second podcast we're doing about Elden Ring. Um, we have both progressed in the game. The last time we talked was two weeks ago. Was it two weeks ago? Uh, it was actually, I think, right around two weeks ago. Yeah, yeah it was like... Th- well, because my first um, bit of the playthrough started two weeks ago. I've done 14 days in total, so yeah. And we talked, what, after day one, day two, something like that? Uh, well, I took some days off, so yeah, it was probably about two weeks. No, no, but we our first conversation, it was like day one, day two. I think it was, I oh, think it was yeah, day yeah. two. It was basically like the preliminary stuff up to roughly Godric, I believe, mm-hmm. like the very first major demigod. Mm-hmm. So, and so since yeah. then, you've gotten far, I've gotten far. So why don't we start off with... How far you've gotten, we'll just go with names, uh, no yep. details. Uh, you can run through your path. Actually, yeah, give us that. Give the path from where you started to where you are now, and okay. then I'll tell you mine, and then we'll go from there. Uh, so from where I was the last time we were talking about this, we took a lot of side detours. We did a lot of mini dungeons. We did um, some quest lines. I remember the Kenneth Height one, the, 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 the Fort Height. Mm-hmm, the mm-hmm. guy that keeps saying his name on top of the, the bridge that was the really noble funny. yeah i kept saying if kenneth height said his name one more time i'd kill him and then he he literally stopped saying it right after <laughs> that, so we let him live. i was ready to kill him yeah. in the game it was funny would you actually um, have killed him i would have actually i was ready to kill him. really 100%. have I, you killed any care. npcs yet uh i i attacks uh selen the sorcerer no i do what that is is she the hot okay. the the not the hot one sorry the mask the mask on her face? The, the big stone head, yeah. Yeah, what did she do? She, like the Easter Island head. She, she gets pissed? disappears. Oh, that's lame. Mm-hmm. Yeah. So yeah, there was, um, there was some detours. There was basically, um, I guess the amount of great runes I have now is five. I want to say five. Okay, well, wait, well, wait, maybe, wait. Maybe six. So maybe you started six. You started at the beginning, and then you went to Murgat, and then you went to Godric, and then where'd you go from there? Oh, I went into uh, Lyrnia, the lake. Um, I did a little bit of the Glintstone area and then kind of took a side detour to the um, the study hall. Mm-hmm. And I realized the study hall, there was nothing there other than a sorcerer that was kicking my ass. So I, <laughs> I left there. Yeah. It was crazy. Um, he teleports. Yeah, he's annoying. He's like, it's kind of like Mikalash as if he learned how to use magic properly. Yeah. So anyway. <laughs> it, you know what that place reminds me of? That place reminds me of a, a combination between the Grand Archives in DS3 and Bloodborne. Bloodborne library dlc library i can't remember what it's called right before you fight right. the living failures mm-hmm. yeah yeah okay so then a great study hall then where'd you go um so i finished glitstone i did renala uh we completed the irena quest line in morn castle and then her father tried to avenge her death um and he dies and ends up appearing at the revenger shack that's off to the west coast of the glenstone palace okay he gives you a plus eight weapon too which is pretty interesting if you kill him oh so edgar edgar is found in morn castle and he doesn't know his daughter actually has been killed yet <gasps> and you're actually supposed to deliver the letter to him yeah his daughter but then she you come back she's been uh, like massacred lessons, yeah massacred by a beast and then he goes to hunt them obviously dies then his phantom tries to kill you oh i haven't gotten to that part yet i didn't know that i i got to the part where i was like yo like hey what's going on and he's like i'm gonna find my daughter and then his daughter's dead and i'm like "Mm." yeah yeah okay um so then you got to mourn castle okay where'd you go after that so glenstone palace did the moon queen yeah renala um then i did the uh the manor i think it's carry carry a manor Maybe with the big yeah. hands, yeah. master hands, yeah. Yeah, little spider hands. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. It's so funny because he actually has the master hand moveset where it's like, da, 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 <sighs> yeah, like sweeping you away and stuff yeah, like that. And the slam, it's that's it's true. Hundred percent Smash Bros. I mean, how many cool. ways can you make a hand attack? I guess he. I, I think know. he does. He do the fist too. I don't know if he does the fist, but that'd be amazing. Yeah, that would like be amazing. One like, yeah, 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 yeah. Yeah, it's a good one. Okay, so then um, so carry on, Plalis. Yeah. Uh, what else did I do after that? I think I went to um, the Ronnie's Tower and talked to her and started her quest line right after that when, when I made it through. Because I, I fought um, Loretta, the, the the phantom on the horse. I think that's such a funny name for a warrior, Loretta. Yeah, it sounds Loretta, like yeah. such an old lady name. Oh, yeah. yeah. I, I think it, it sounds like it's a rock and roll song or something. Loretta? Yeah, it's like my, my Loretta or something. My Loretta? <laughs> my Loretta. My Loretta. It sounds like my grandma. Like, that's what... It's not like love of the, your, your life. L- Loretta would be like would be like uh, like Josephine or something like that. Jo- nah. Or, or, or like, or like or grandma name would be like Josephine. Or it would be like... um like uh, Loretta is like best... Mildred. Best, Mildred yeah. Like, yeah. Loretta is best friends with Mildred or Myrtle. Or Myrtle. <laughs> Myrtle. Yeah. Myrtle. Yeah. 
<laughs> Myrtle's the Harry Potter. Uh, oh, Moaning name. Myrtle. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. But she wasn't old. She was kind of, was she hot or was she like not? I can't remember what she was. She was like, she was like a student. Oh, she was that, a student? Was, she wasn't? That like, that like just hung out in the washrooms that was a ghost. And just cried? She, she like died and then she was like in the, the yeah, it was, was kind of, it's kind of dark actually. Huh. <laughs> Man, that those books were cool. I like those books. I really like that series. Yeah, yeah, yeah. that's good. Yeah. That's really cool. Um, anyways, yeah. yeah. So I did that, and um, after that point, I think I went and did more of the Kalid area. But I didn't actually find Redan until later. So okay, I had to keep bouncing back and forth. Um, I progressed a lot of the uh, underground of Misswood, where you go through the well, and then you get to the Siafra <laughs> Riverbank. <laughs> did that. Um, found. Um, blade there or blythe i guess his name is because it's like irish or something blythe really or welsh welsh, welsh sorry they it's pronounce blythe, yeah. they pronounce dd as th th yeah really so blythe. <laughs> what? that's what Ron, that's what ronnie says she apparently has a welsh uh voice actor too so uh, she says blythe blythe and then huh he tells you that you have to go and find um you know maybe she just can't this. spell what if she just can't spell she's just pretending she's just not well, her accent freaking, she's not even a real person yeah, okay. anyway, so <laughs> yeah. whatever yeah <laughs> so i did that um and then, so he, uh, Blythe tells you to go find Celibus. Celibus is just a complete asshole mm-hmm. and literally is just like, I don't care unless you finish the job, like yeah. come back when you've done something cool or whatever. Yeah. Um, and then you talk to him and again, and he, he kind of disappears at that point from that area. I had already completed it though. Mm. Before that I had done both bosses. I did the dragon kin and I did the, um, the ancestral spirit, like like little deer guy. Yeah. So I had to come back and then find out that that quest line also progresses that area too, but yep. wasn't sure how to continue it. Yeah. Um, so yeah, basically at that point, I actually progressed the quest line by doing the festival for Redan. Mm-hmm. but that was after making it to the capital though. So I found the Dectus medallion mm-hmm. right side and the, the left side and then did that. I can't so remember where those are. Side. Yeah. Kenneth Heights. And then what gives you the other side? Uh, the other one is in a fort where that giant dragon's inside the ground in, um, Kaled. Like the huge dragon, I don't know if you found him. He's like actually stuck. He can't get out of the ground. You can just kill him and get like a hundred k almost. So I never found that dragon, but I found the other side of the medallion. That was right. I'm pretty sure it's right in front of it. It's I must fort. have just barely missed him or something. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. I think it's there. At least that's where I remember. Yeah. Yeah. It's it's like in a place that? with the bat things, and then you go up and there's ghost boys, right? Mm-hmm. And then at yep. the at the end there's a medallion. Yeah, I can't believe I didn't see that dragon. Right. Okay. So then Radon, and then after Radon? Um, after that, then we did, oh man, that was, then I think we continued the Ronnie quest line even more. We found out how to go to uh, Nakron. Mm-hmm. And um, Colonel oh, City. Galmir as, Galmir as well. I don't know if you found Galmir. Galmir. What no, is Mount Galmir. It's like a oh, volcano. yeah, 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 yeah. So I did all that stuff. I did the Volcano Manor um, stuff. Yeah. Ricard, and then. Um, Riker, Ricard? Rikard? R- Rikard, 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 together. Whatever. That guy. Yeah, to, to, together. Yeah. <laughs> you <laughs> got <it> together. <laughs> yeah. And then yeah, we did that, and then uh, my chat that's pretty much fucking it, I think. love that shit. Together. That's my favorite boss in the game, actually, at this point. R- R- Rikard? Is it Rikard or Rikard? I want to say Rikard. Rikard, and then also Astel and um, Morgoth as well, which you haven't found, but but uh, uh, Astel, okay. yeah. Where did you Where did you find Astel? How did you get to Astel? You went. Was at, it was at the end of the the Nakron Eternal City quest line with Ronnie, like the extension of it. And then once you kill him, there's another wall after that yeah. that you have to proceed with with some other type of progression. But I'm not sure yet. So. Oh shit! Really? There's like a light wall after him that you get to. You get to like literally, it's like that pool of water, and there's only there's one opening where you came in to fight him on the other side of the fog gate. Then there's like a wall. Have you finished Ronnie's symbol. quest? I have the small doll, but I haven't been able to figure out what to do with it yet. Okay. So, uh, do you want me? Do you want me to tell you or no? I want to figure. Okay, it out. Okay, you still. figure it out. I won't say anything else. Yeah. Okay. So I. Yeah. <laughs> okay. So you you ended at Rikard and then you went somewhere else and that's where you are. So you're one step after Rikard, basically Volcano Manor Manor and then you did one more thing and that's where you are now, right? I've also I've also done the capital though, like Landell, mm-hmm. and you just got there, so I've completed all that. You fight the Double Tree Sentinel. Uh, yep. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. I have a really funny. I have a really funny clip. I don't know if you want to open it on your thing and like record it. Or, I, like, I reference it, but like I can. I well, maybe I can. Uh, it's only like, I don't it's know if minute, I can but, without. You know what? Maybe I can. I can uh, try to send it to you. Yeah, send it to me. Actually, fuck. Is it gonna fuck everything up? No, I can't. Uh, you can't. Okay. No, no, I can't. Well, I can't. I'm good. You can. I think I can. Okay. <laughs> 
I think I think I can. I think what is that? Is that Thomas the Tank Engine? I think no, that's the little engine that could. Oh, I think I can. I think I can. Thomas the Tank Engine sketchy actually. What? Why? Because the faces on the the trains look like they want to kill you. Oh yeah, they're they're a little bit terrifying, especially Gordon. Oh my God, the Gordon. Gordon and Percy, they were like two opposite sides of I'm gonna murder you in your sleep. I have a theory that the actual people uh, that are the conductors are are taken uh, hostage by the trains. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. yeah, yeah. I guess that I was that scared when I was a kid. I had so many theories about it. Really? I, was, I, was, I hated that show. Thomas the Tank Engine. I mean, yeah, I didn't like it, it either. Scared, it scared me. Man. It did it was, scare it me. There's a lot of kids shows that scared me actually. I found <laughs> it weird when other people weren't fucking scared by Ren and Stimpy or Rocco's Modern Life or Ed, yeah. Ed and Eddie. You know, shit like that. Those, those, those shows messed me up. Mm-hmm. Yeah, yeah, like big Cat time. Dog. Okay, send it to me on Discord, and I'll, I'll, I'll pop it up. I put it in chat. Your chat. In. Mm, okay, fine. <laughs> <laughs> Making you work for you, but I, I think that if you can include the clip yourself, it's worth it. Just because really funny people on my channel, if you've watched my YouTube, you've probably seen it. Uh, it's it's around the thirty second or maybe a twenty second mark or so. I'll watch it. Thank you, whoever, for the sub. I can't see it right now. It like a, just the tip of the. I can the hear you too. It. Interesting. Or maybe. Yeah, Man, you're the, looking the... fancy with your with your feather, <laughs> with your peacock yeah. feather helmet. Oh yeah, yeah. I have a red one too. Yeah. Where'd the other tree sentinel go? I killed him first. But oh, then this he killed him the, first. the one by himself. Okay. I don't know if you've seen this yet. Oh, he stopped. I seem to forget what I was doing. <laughs> I have forgotten indeed. Say, Horsey, do you remember what we were doing? You need a top hat. Nay. Oh, I have I have a one with a feather. I have a feather. Yeah. Well, I think nay. It has something what to do joke with that is that? You said nay. <laughs> it, it worked, though. It worked. It was effective. It was effective. Yeah, that's... Oh, shit. I hate that joke, man. I hate it, too. But yeah. 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 Nay. <laughs> That's, what, that's all it would say. <laughs> what, what's happening, guys? Um, oh, you staggered him. Maybe we can stagger him out mm-hmm. of it. And then it just kind of uh, brings him back into the regular. He's, hey, really he's weird. back. Okay. That's funny. That was interesting. Don't let him kill you. Please don't let him kill you after that. I didn't. Okay, good. <laughs> yeah. Double heal just to be safe. That would have been the best thing really if he just like, did an instant shield attack and killed him. Yeah, that was cool, man. Mm-hmm. That That's how uh, a lot of speedrunners or speedruns go, I think. Allegedly, really? yeah. There's lots okay. of um, lots of enemy freezing and, and things like that. That's interesting. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Okay. Anyway, so you did your route. I'll do my route. Okay. So, start of the game. Uh, found a uh, also tree spirit. You and me both. And mm-hmm. then out to tree sentinel. And then I went to Murget. And Mur-get. then <laughs> and then I found another optional boss in the castle of Godric that I don't think you've seen yet. So I won't mention. Uh, oh yeah. I didn't, I didn't find that. No. Yeah. There's an optional boss down there. Um, okay. And then I killed Godric. And then after Godric, I'm like, yo, I'll explore Limgrave cause I haven't done it. And I went to go fight the dragon in the lake, a And then after a is cool. Yeah. I like Agil. And then after that, I went to do a cave and at the end of the cave was a chest and that chest was a trap and people were like, it's a trap. So I, I got out of the trap and they're like, no, 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 you want to be in the trap. And I was like, okay. So I jumped in the trap and it transported me to the Glintstone cave. Uh, I can't remember what it's called. Oh, the one that has the um, the star fallen beast. Mm-hmm, the falling star beast. That's yeah. actually on screen right now. I falling got beast, yeah. teleported there, and then I didn't know how to progress, so I just left, and I went out into Kaled. Um, okay. And then from Kaled, I just wandered around, and I'm like, I'm probably not supposed to be here because there's those big T-Rex dogs and the, <laughs> the scary. I love that. What do you think about the T-Rex They're dogs? They're goofy. They're like part car. <laughs> They're part car when they chase you with yeah. their mouths open. Yeah. It's all. It's kind of cool though, because I feel like they actually added some humor to the game. They did. Yeah. I like them. I like them. Yeah. I hate the crows. The crows are terrifying. Oh, they're so bad. Yeah, the crows are <laughs> terrifying. There's seagulls too. There's seagulls. Oh, actually. really? Or like white birds that are even worse. Yeah. Do they look and like the crows or are like just white they or are the exact same kind of size? But they they look like seagulls. They look that's of. scarier. I think seagulls are so scarier shitty. than crows. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. You know what's fucking shitty? Those eagles with with blades on their feet and fire yep. fire masks. Those things are shitty. Mm-hmm. Um, right. Yeah, what else is shitty? The fucking million hands, caterpillar boyos. Yep. They yeah. shoot the arrows? No, they come out from the ground. 
A million hand caterpillars that come out of the ground. And they jump at you and they screech. I don't know if I've seen that. Maybe. No, you had to have. If you've been in uh, Renala Town, they're there 100%. They like come out of the ground with the bluish, yellowish aura. And then um, they like jump across the screen. They're very, very hard to predict. They're in the trailer, in the Elden Ring trailer, the first one. I probably have seen it, but I can't yeah, remember. Yeah, yeah. Okay. There's, there's so many enemies in this game. It's actually like, how many how many different enemy types do you think there even is? Like, aside from even just um, bosses, but including. Including like bosses? Every unique design. Probably over. Every over, unique design over, there is. Over around 200, I'd say. Around 200, probably. You think there's 200 unique designs of enemies in general? That's tough because it's unique designs. I don't know how many bosses there are. I have no idea, but I know non-unique. Well over, well over 100 for the yeah, bosses. But they're non-unique. Right. Yeah. So that's true. That's true. Uh, I probably say close to 120. I, that would be my guess. 120. 120 unique designs of total enemies. Yeah, okay. not just reskins. Like unique move set, different. This is different because you got you got tons of things. You got the gravity boys, the stone gravity boys. You got the crows. Mm -hmm. You got the the dogs. You got the spinny tweaked out. I almost, I almost want to say there's there's over 200 unique designs minimum. Like 200. Just, oh, I think there's almost over over 200 unique like designs in general. Accounting for the fact I haven't seen everything and I've already seen so many that there's so many like there's easily over 100 unique things I've seen at this point. Mm -hmm. Oh yeah. Like so yeah, so yeah, yeah. and that's that's only having beaten what I've been told is like what, you know, more than half of the main game and then Probably nothing compared to all of the, the optional stuff. Right? Jeez, I don't know how far I am. Um, I have no so. idea. Anyway, where was I? Uh, Kaled. So in Kaled, I was like, okay, you know what? I kind of want to wander around. And at this point, I'm very low level. Like, I think I'm in my 20s. So killing dogs and killing crows is pretty hard. Killing the sorcerers of that sorcery town is just like, no, I'm not going to do it. So I'm just mm. running around looking for bonfires. And eventually, I get directed towards the castle, Redmain Castle. And I'm like, you know what? I'll just go in there and check it out and get a bonfire and leave. So I go in there and then I end up just going through the castle. The only bonfire there, or I guess Lost Grace there, is at almost the very end. And it's right before the boss. And the boss I fight is the Misbegotten Warrior and the Crucible Knight. That's the first time I've seen the Misbegotten Warrior. And the Crucible Knight I saw at the lower part of Godric's castle Oh, okay, so that's interesting because I saw the Misbegotten Beast because I did Morn Castle. Yeah. And you probably hadn't at that point. So we actually had like a reverse on that. Mm -hmm. I went to Caleb I, first. I, I also experienced them at the time that I got to um, the Red Main Castle. Yeah. Which apparently is an event that can be changed. Yeah, a lot of people didn't get it. Um, they, no, they, yeah. they didn't get that boss fight. But I spent six hours, no, more than six hours on that boss fight because it's a double boss fight, right? And I, I, was, mm -hmm. I was level 35. So I was getting one shot by everything. So I had right. to kill the misbegotten warrior and I had to kill him fast enough that I could deal with the crucible knight. And then the crucible knight in itself takes zero damage. So it was, it was a very long fight. Uh, yeah. Yeah. He's, he's really tanky in terms of like, even st like I've, I've staggered him before, but you can only do like one per fight with the way that I was using like a heavier weapon and attacking him as much as I possibly could. I was using claws. Yeah. yeah I got the claws. Oh. So the interesting thing with my fight though, is it was quicker because I actually was able to kill misbegotten beast every single time within the first 10 seconds, like before even killing crucible. Oh, it took me so long. Yeah. Uh, it took me so long. Anyway, after that I went and I went and I was like, well, I've done this. I'm going to go explore the swamp of Kaled. I'm not going to leave because you know, mm. why at this point, why leave? But it wouldn't let me go further. Like there was no Radon at that point. The festival wouldn't trigger. So I went and I went to the Swamp of Aeonia. Have you fought the guy in the Swamp of Aeonia? His name's O'Neill. No, but I've, I've someone in my chat said O'Neill is a pain in the ass. Oh God, it's the worst fight ever. And low level is even worse. Game. It is, it's not, it's like, there are fights that are really cool and really fun. Like, okay, that mm. fight is done well. You know when to dodge. It's not like it's not Osiris Insta Charge, but it's like mm -hmm. it still takes tech. It's, it's challenging and it takes like skill. A good, challenge. a good challenge. And then okay. there are bosses that are a bad challenge where it's like two or three bosses in a room or bosses that summon ads where it's like I rolled and I was just put in a situation where even though I reacted as best as I could, I got roll caught by a different enemy that just happened to be there. You get put into impossible situations in certain boss fights. I don't think those are good boss fights, but I think those are boss fights more something, more designed for summons right. and stuff. Anyway, did that boss fight. That took me another shit ton of hours. My game crashed right at the end of my first kill. Had to redo it. 
I've heard that actually that uh, that's been happening because of memory on the RAM, like overloading. Really? If you have 16 gigs of RAM, for example, yeah. I have 16 DDR4 and it, it has actually maxed out before. Yeah. I paid attention on Task Manager. It does get pretty high up. Yeah. And then um, someone was suggesting like maybe it's because it actually hits like a peak or whatever. Yeah. And that they found that that was the issue with them. So yeah. 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 I don't know. I wonder if that's the same thing. For maybe. You. Yeah. What's going on there? I don't know. Um. Yeah, it probably was actually. I think I don't even think I have, I think I have DDR3. Anyway, after that. Ooh, DDR3. Yeah, um, my PC is old. After okay. that, I like went up. I fought my first like Erd Tree Chubber, the big chunky wood boy. Mm -hmm. um, those things are cool. Killed that guy. Um, went and I fought Godskin Apostle in that tower, in the Divine Tower. Ooh, that was a really fun fight. That was a really you cool did it fight. Early, though, I did it so early. And I. Uh, One level like 30 something like very early no it, may, it might have been 50 it might have been 50 but it was it was still early so he mm -hmm. he one shot me with everything um but i that was my favorite fight for a very long time i thought it was really cool um yeah. then i was like okay well i can't be here i decided to try and get back on the main progression like where you're intended to go so right. i went to uh like castle Morn that area but mm -hmm. as i got there i got instantly teleported to way up in bestial town have you been to bestial town top right of the map is, it, is that actually a, like a, the name a name of the place no it's just like it's uh it's a it's an npc that you can give death roots to oh bestial sanctum that one yeah with, with the gargoyle the black gargoyle yeah in it. front yeah, of I, it i i made it there pretty early and um uh the uh the knight uh, his name is D in the round table. He gives you um, the quest. He gives you the point on the map. Oh, does he? Well, maybe you could, you got there without talking to him, but the guy that has the gold and silver armor. Is yeah, with the, the head, yeah. If you find the death route first, he'll he'll show you, he'll put a red marker on your map where to go. Oh, shit, I had no so idea. That's how I found it. Yeah. And then like when I got there too, it was really hard. So. <laughs> I did not kill that gargoyle. That's one of the bosses. I was just like, I'm going to leave this because I do no, you, no damage. you still so. haven't killed him? No, I killed him later. I killed him now. Oh, okay. Um, but then anyway, after that, went down, killed the dragon on the bridge. That's when I realized there's more than one dragon. Um, and then I think I did some stuff. I fought a fucking massive bear. The bear enemies are garbage and well they're, oh, the, they're good theirs are some of the worst they're they, they, horrible. they actually have like a mini insta charge yeah yeah they do they yeah, have there's... two insta charges yeah yeah man uh, like swipe 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 oh you're you're gonna heal that and they're big so you can't see what they're doing they got these big hit boxes and they're in these small caves mm -hmm. um did all that and then eventually i got back on the normal path and i explored where you did castle morn that area and then i went to Renala town which is i don't know what it's called the lake. Uh, Rhea Lucaria? Yeah, Rhea Lucaria. And right. I killed Renala, and she was really easy because at that point I was way over leveled because I did Kaled first. I thought she was a cool right. boss, though. And then the weirdest thing is that she's just like, whatever, you killed me. Here, let me do whatever for you. Like, she's your friend now. <laughs> um, Which is kind of interesting, too. Yeah, it's, it's, it's cool. That. It's just like, it's unexpected. Like, after I mm -hmm. killed her, I was like, oh, you're just still here. <laughs> I think it adds more to the story, though, because we were talking about how in the first episode, how the story um, flows a bit differently mm. and the characters importance all across the board really play into the main event, not so much as they have side stories of timelines that existed before you were there, mm -hmm. like with other lands and other, you know, things mm -hmm. like they more are involved in the main conflict. And so I feel like she, um, you know, being the person to go and respect through is more of a cool way to do it than going to an NPC that already exists earlier on that you know you can do that with. Yeah. You just bring an item to. Yeah, yeah. So that's interesting how they utilize it in two different ways. No, I, I think that's cool too, yeah. I really, yeah. I'm actually more, much more invested in these NPC stories than I was in other games. Oh yeah, a ton for sure. So then after Rhea Lucari, I went into the study. I managed to kill that guy, the guy that runs around mm -hmm. and teleports, but there's nothing else you can do there. So then I, I went up and around like the the city of the the land the village of the albanorix and then around rea lucaria that whole area and then i went up into the hand the hand hand place the, um the manor the, yeah, manor. the manor yeah and then someone yeah. told me i missed i missed something in mistwood so i went to mistwood there's an elevator that goes all the way down into ant town uh you remember ant town ant town Ant, ant town. town oh wait you oh so okay wait you got there though immediately you got to the ant place right from the the lifts lift lift goes down into ant town and then that's where you fight the dragonkin soldier as well 
Wait, when you said Ant Town, though, immediately, though, I'm trying to think because I like you didn't go to the riverbank with like the clay people that blew bubbles right away. He, he, I saw Ant. That was no, that was after Ant Town. Oh, see, so, okay, that's actually really interesting because I heard there was a tunnel. I did it in reverse. I so you started above and then went down. I started down, then went up. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. That's super cool. That actually. is super I didn't cool. Know you can do that because because the way that I actually got above was through a uh, chest in a waterfall or something like that. Oh shit! Yeah, no, because no. It was like a cutscene. I went down the elevator. I didn't know you could do that. I didn't know you could teleport through there. So the elevator you found must have been different than mine, or something else happened. Because yeah, like the clay people were first for me in the ruins, and then you go into uh, where the dragon can is, like above on the waterfall, and you do um the ancestral spirit thing mm -hmm. and then above that is the ants mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. so that's that's crazy yeah, yeah. okay and then i didn't know that fought the dragon King soldier i hate underground by the way uh and then i also somehow got teleported to volcano manor at some point but i went and i explored and then i did ronnie's quest and mm -hmm. ronnie's quest just runs you underground everywhere so yep. then i fought uh a boss and i think it was something i don't know what it was but there was what, is it, what did it look like there was the thing that you and i both fought the astel astel born of the void yeah, yeah which was a bloodborne enemy but he wasn't he yeah he, he was, was awkward cool. he was he was cool but he was awkward to fight you know it's actually really funny about him like i was making jokes saying like or actually even people in chat bring it up like that's like orphan's final form like after he grows up yeah 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 <laughs> kind of seemed like it yeah yeah that's funny yeah i'm interested in because there's this there's this whole part of the game that's like from the stars as well like you have the mm. the i don't know what they're called but those mini bosses and then you have estelle like the, the cosmic boss the cosmic like the ones, ones are more the more they're like ones that seem like they're interdimensional yeah sort or inter yeah, yeah. Interplanetary. and there's something there too that's interesting I, I like that that's a theory i actually have about the story of the game but i don't want to talk about it until i've beaten it so i can confirm it silently with a people telling me right like you know what i'm actually my full analysis of it at the moment is yeah. true or not so yeah. i'm gonna keep that a secret but yeah all right yeah, i have yeah. some theories though yeah yeah um and then uh we're we're oh also estelle and then i fought the two two gargoyles down there as well which was a hor horrible fight twin blade gargoyle and sword axe gargoyle mm -hmm. which one do you think is harder for you the twin blade or the i have the no axe? idea how the twin blade works the axe sucks the sword is easy like the little straight sword no problem mm -hmm. the axe sucks because he does that spin attack right and it, it's an infuriating fight and i was like well i'm not going to do that uh or i'm not going to summon for it but went through there and then finish Ronnie's quest. So I finished Ronnie's quest. I won't give away the ending or anything, but it's really cool. Okay. Awesome. And I also, in the process, I finished Fia's quest. I'm not even sure if I know who that is. Booba Hug. Oh, the Baldekin's <laughs> Blessing. There yeah, you okay, go. Okay. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I just remember that because it's like such a funny like part of the game. It is funny. Like, yeah. The Isn't she in the, the opening cutscene too? She's yeah. like sleeping with like the corpse in the in the tomb. The deathbed companion. Yeah. Deathbed companion. Yeah. 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 Her quest is I, cool. I found the dung eater, by the way. Yeah, I, I I found him in the round table hold, but I haven't found him yet. Like he he's like a phantom in the round table. Yes. Round table yeah. hold. Yeah. Okay. And okay. he's very he's very like criminal British. Yeah, and he, and he thinks you're. He just thinks like you're useless. Yeah, He's just like I don't care. Yeah, <laughs> it's pretty fun. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Um. So then there was that, and then after that stuff, where did I go? Then I actually did Volcano Manor, and I killed mm -hmm. Rikard, and together, and he was, <laughs> he was hard. Uh, you think so? There's some attacks in that fight that you can't dodge. Like yeah. It, um. The skulls too is it's a lot of skulls, a lot, yeah. lot of ghost riding vibes, ghost rider. Yeah, I found with the skulls, <laughs> the you just you just run the hell away from them and you're okay. Mm -hmm. But in the first phase, when he put when the snake puts his head in the ground and flicks lava at you, I have no idea how to dodge that. I think I dodged that twice. Um, when he puts it in the ground, you can run away. Mm -mm. You can't run straight back; it'll catch you. Maybe I ran on an angle backwards. I'm trying to think like when it's just stuck inside the ground, right? Yes. And then he flicks it forward and then the ground erupts and you can't jump it either. I thought you might be able to jump it. What I did was I ran kind of on an angle backwards for that. That one. Okay. I'll try that maybe next time. That's how yeah. I, I had to run circular, but then pillars get in the way and it's annoying. Mm -hmm. um, it's a really, really cool way to do a gimmick boss that is like kind of capitalizing on the fact that it's not like your arm where you get the easy five hit win. Mm -hmm. um, you, you don't stagger him like right off the bat with every attack mm -hmm. you have to do special combinations or you know use the weapon art at certain times and then in the part two it actually improves the fight even more that rather than just making a couple extra attacks and you know giving him a different type of damage or whatever he actually does transform quite a bit mm -hmm. 
Um, and then the weapon, even the tool you're using that could be considered the gimmick. Um, What's it called? Itself. It's snake, snake it's hunter or something. Slayer, serpent slayer. Oh, wow. I'm pretty sure it's a serpent slayer, but like, it's really cool how they get the callback to nameless King spear. Yeah. And yeah actually, yeah. It, like, I didn't even notice that. Yeah. Yeah. It's like the, the nameless King spear. And then they give it like the extended storm ruler move set and everything is a different attack on it. Right? And it was fun. It was way better yeah. than storm ruler. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Jump attacks, poke attacks. You had combos with it. You had the L2 attack. Did you, did you try the running R2 on it? Yeah. The double stab. The, well, it was like a, it's like a javelin, like where you just keep running with it and it keeps stabbing as you keep running. If you hold, if you, if you press R2 while running, like the heavy attack button. And you just hold it? You don't have to hold, well, you don't hold it, but you press it and it does like this just crazy multi hit. It was like one, two, three, four, five. Like it just keeps going. I only ever got two hits off that. I think mine did more because it gets like a big finish, but then it also does like little bits like as it's going, kind of like the um, you know, the Lance in Dark Souls 2, like yeah. Grand Lance. Yeah, yeah. It's like the, it's like that pain train kind of thing. Pain train. With it. <laughs> it's really cool. Yeah. Yeah. No, I never got that. Um now I kind of want to see what it does because that might make it make things easier. Yeah, um for me, um, that was like my favorite attack for at the beginning, and people were like, yo, use the other attacks. So I was like, okay. Okay, yeah. <laughs> yeah, the jumping attack was really useful, but I actually died on that fight a lot. Like a lot, I a lot. I died, for, I died for probably at least like 30 minutes to like an hour or something. That fight was yeah. harder than I expected. And every time you die, he just says, what does he say? Now we can devour gods together. He yeah. does that every time. <laughs> um, yeah. After Rickard, oh, then I went and I did Atlas Plateau. So is it Atlas or is it Altus? Because someone told me I'm saying it wrong by saying Atlas. I really hope it's not Altus. Because I think it's Atlas. Yeah, okay, okay, people in chat right now that actually aren't memers, please tell us yeah. like, right now. Because you, you, you're history. looking at my chat. Yeah, I'm not looking at my chat. Um, I'm pretty sure it's Atlas. Is it Altus? I'm saying that, and then I'm like, I got I got corrected. I'm like, is, is, did I did my, is my life a lie? Like, <laughs> yeah, no way. I don't know. It's man. like that Welsh well, either thing. Either way, you, you, uh, it is Atlas. It is Atlas. Oh no, Altus. 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 They're lying to you. There's no way they're giving you two different answers. Alt, no, no, no. They were both Altus, but I don't know. Whatever. It's Atlas now. It's Atlas to me. Uh, I don't know, man. It's Atlas and Welsh. Wait, wait. I'm looking it up. We have to know this for All sure. All right. You look for it the up. record. Right. It is Altus Plateau. Oh, it's Atlas. I knew it. We have a we have a reading disability. <laughs> okay. I'm joking. I'm is it Altus? <laughs> it's Altus. Oh, God. Okay. It's Altus. I'm just going to pretend you never said that. I'm just going to call it Atlas. Anyway. Oh, I just ruined people's lives on podcasts. In <laughs> Atlas Plateau, I went around and discovered a bunch of stuff. Uh, those mm -hmm. towers, they're kind of fun little puzzles. You, oh, yeah. The, the, ri the rise Do you ever towers? have the blue turtle? The blue turtles and the, the giant turtles? Uh, the blue turtles. There's one with giant blue turtles. I've never seen that before. Oh yeah, there's one. I in... found the I found the really big turtle. I don't know if you found like the giant turtle. Uh, with the, the Pope the hat, master turtle. Pope hat, Pope turtle. Yeah, 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 yeah. Pope, yeah. Pope turtle. That was that was one of my favorite NPCs as well. Yeah, I, I like him. He's, he's <laughs> yeah, I like his hat. He's just like chilling in the in the forest. Teaches the you grass. teaches you stuff. Mm -hmm. I actually tried to jump on him, and I was like, I can immediately tell it's going to glitch the game. Or I'm gonna it was going to, yeah. <laughs> yeah. Or he's going to get upset with you or something, and you're going to lose mm -hmm. him for the rest of the game. We're going to kill him. He's going to, like, run off. Oh, and sorry, before all of that, so before I did Ronnie's quest, I actually did Radon. Um, okay. And I, I, did Rad I ended up doing Radon with a plus zero dagger. I watched that clip actually. I watched the the video for that. Um, yeah. I think it was like a couple days after you did it because I wanted to get it done first. And, um, that was impressive, dude. Because I only I did it literally in seven tries with a weapon where I didn't even have to like pay attention to anything. Mm -hmm. I could just like hit him. I got bleed and holy damage at the same time. Yeah, staggered him a bunch as well, and I basically skipped like half of his moves. Yeah, yeah. And it's like yeah. that's that's one of the problems. I'm, it's not a problem I have with Elden Ring, but it's a problem I have with. It's one of the downsides you get from having an open world is you get mm -hmm. so strong that some bosses are nothing, and unless you right. intentionally. Uh, gimp yourself you're not going to experience the boss so that's why i did it on like that because i was like i want to he's supposed to be cool okay after atlas plateau that dragon i think it's fornisax or something lightning dragon who just comes down you beat him up he pieces uh was it one that had red lightning no yellow yellow light yellow lightning Ooh, he's I might cool. have not found that one i don't know how you Oh, okay. Well, he's there somewhere. There was one that was uh, near Ronnie's tower, like the the Ronnie Celibus and um, the other the other Rise Tower, the Rena's Rise. Rise. They 
there was a dragon in the middle of those three rise towers where you go to Ronnie the first time, and then it flies away too. Mm. I don't know if you ever experienced Oh, the that Glintstone after, one. After Loretta. The Glintstone one. Yeah, but not in the lake though, the one in the actual yeah. like, carry manner. Yeah, you, yeah, you fight him and then he pieces. Yeah. And he's got Apparently that really cool he's got that really cool sword thing in attack. Yeah. 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 No, he's he's somewhere else. You can find him somewhere else. Oh, okay. Yeah. Okay. But did Fornisax, did the double tree sentinel, went into the capital. Did you find the callback to the previous boss in that area? In the capital. In the area around the capital. I haven't gone oh, inside they, the capital. Oh, yet. Dracon, Draconic uh, tree, tree Sentinel. No. Was that it? No. No. It, That's a callback as well. Um, there's another one. I won't spoil it for you, but he's there. Just, it's, not a tree, it's not a tree avatar or anything like that. No. It's one of the first bosses in the game, and he's like, yo, what's up? And you're like, hey. <sighs> and it's like right outside the capital. Yeah, it's in the area. It's in the perimeter outside the capital. So if you just walk, I must have found it. It's not the do double tree sent, or double tree sentinel. No, no, no. It's in that gate. In that gate, but not in the capital yet. And then... oh, oh, the golden Godric. No. <laughs> Where did you find all these guys? You're giving all me all these guys I haven't found. Oh, no. <laughs> no, it's 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 Spoiler it's. I don't care. It's it's. You can tell me just because yeah. I told you all these. It's Murgit. Murgit comes back. Oh, you're talking about Morgat. No, Mur. Margit. Regular Margit comes back. Again. Yes. This is the, oh, oh my God. <laughs> it's okay. <laughs> yeah. I never saw regular Margit. He twice. comes back. He's like, hey, and he talks to you. And then you're just, oh. you just fuck him up. And then I can't remember what he says, but. Okay. So that actually now furthers my um, like suspicions about the storyline. Cause he seems to be a really prevalent character. And I actually noticed too. Um, if you go, there's a tunnel by the double tree sentinel fight. It's like just a mini dungeon mm. and you fight a wreckage. It's like a generic beast guy and a flower or whatever. I don't know if you care. About generic that, beast guy and a flower and a flower. Yeah, he, he's like a cat. He's like a, he's like a capper demon type looking dude. And then like, but he, he, you fought him, I think elsewhere before that, at that point, at least I did. Yeah. And if you read, he has an omen killer cleaver and like his species hunted the omens, which are the people. Uh, of Margaret, uh, and he's a fell omen. Yes. And, it, and it's actually crafted with the horns that he has on his body. No way. Like okay, so, the so he, okay, so this group of warriors hunted the omens. What does this have to like? What where are you going with this? Well, I'm just thinking like maybe his prevalence in the story of being like the fellow in the beginning, and then obviously everything else I know about it past that point um, has some relevance with the fact that also he kind of just phases in. Like if you notice the first cutscene, he's not actually just standing there; he like appears. Mm -hmm. Yeah, he's just like a golden like he just appears like out of light, basically. Yeah, same thing he does kind of like, in that area. Yeah, kind of like kind of like the maiden, kind of like um, Torrance, you know. Yeah. So I'm wondering what the relevance of that is because you'll notice he only has enough power in the fight, the first one, to use the cane. He can he can conjure the daggers and he can conjure the sword, but it's like and the hammer. But he he doesn't do anything like much more impressive than that. He doesn't he doesn't actually teleport. He doesn't use anything beyond that. So I'm wondering like what his relevance is in terms of like is he trying to teach you a lesson of some sort in the story or is it like like what is what is his you know because if, he he seems like a security almost in the beginning for if, the castle, but then if we looked at his dialogue we could probably figure something out because every time i hear him speak i'm like i have no idea what you're saying yeah yeah and i have no clue what you're talking about and i don't look he's, into there's it there's a line he says when you when he kills you too every time he kills you um uh what is it uh foolish ambition or something like that mm -hmm. something like this mm -hmm. some sort of like re repeated thing every time he kills you i wonder that would be really yeah. cool if he's he's actually important to the story I think he is important to the story to some degree, maybe not like on the like the grand scale of the final yeah. or the end game, but I think he actually has um, like a lot of relevance. He he reminds me of kind of he's like a gas coin type character. He's like high quality first boss. But, yeah, yeah. You know, immediately has some connection to like what's going on. Something, yeah. And I guess gas coin yeah. totally did with Bloodborne lore. That's the only lore I know out of all those Souls games is Bloodborne lore. Right. Yeah. Right. I thought it was really cool. Mm -hmm. um, yeah. So okay. Then after that, where was I? I, I'm right there. So I've killed the second Murgit right. uh, in the field and I'm right. I haven't gone in the capital yet. I was teleported there earlier, but I never really explored it. Um, mm -hmm. You do any of the volcano mana quests? I did. I actually, I killed the guy they sent me to go and uh, eliminate in Limgrave, like yeah. North Limgrave. Yeah. And um it was an it was interesting, but then beyond that, I think I didn't complete more or like further the quest line if it was bigger than that because I had already had killed Rikard, which means that they leave the manor because they're done. Like oh, they disband. Yeah. I don't know if you went back and talked to um, I think it was she leaves. 
Tanith, right? I believe it is. Is that her name? With with her Tanith, the, the girl with like the the stone mask, and then like there's the big crucible. Knife yeah, he's hanging out. Her, yeah. If you go back, go go back to Riker's corpse. I won't spoil it for you, but go back to Riker's corpse. I did. Oh, I did. And then did you punch her? I, I, I hit it and then I did the fight. You hit it and then you quit it. It was really cool. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Um, oh, one more thing I missed. And this is where we're different. So we've already said names, but before I finished the Ronnie quest underground, I did a different quest. I did, you know, the first guy in the game. Oh yeah. The um, maidenless meme guy. Yeah. The maidenless guy. Yeah. yeah so he yeah. has a quest line and okay. uh, I did his quest line. And basically that got me to an area of the game early and in that area of the game, I killed Moog. And Moog right now is actually my favorite fight. But I killed that okay. very, very... I gained 10 levels after I beat him. Like, it was oh it was a lot. Um, but then that's... That's insane. That's, that's where we're all. So we're all caught up. We pretty much okay. have the same great, great runes done. Most of the same quests. I think I have Fia over mm-hmm. you and you have a few... You have that phantom guy over me and stuff like that. And you only have like roughly eight hours more than me, I think, at this point. Mm-hmm. And a lot, of, like a lot of those hours were spent... On the Radon, <laughs> on the Radon fight, or on the yeah. the double boss fight that I was so stubborn the with. What level is your character at this point? Then that's probably the best. I think way he's to wrap one of one oh six or so. Okay, so then I guess in terms of levels, you've kept a lot of your you've you've maintained a lot of your runes or like gotten a decent amount of farming in because I'm level one ten ish or something like that. Yeah, so we're around the same. Mm-hmm. That's really cool. Yeah. I didn't expect that. We've gone in completely different directions, but progression wise, we're pretty similar. Yeah, yeah. Okay, yeah. And then what kind of build are you doing at this point too? Claws. Just claws, so what just I what I have done is I have just I got the claws. My claws are like plus twenty three keen claws mm-hmm. or something. I have thirty decks, thirty arcane, thirty intelligence, thirty faith, and like eighteen strength, and okay. twenty five vigor, and those are my stats. So I don't have a build. I'm just I built the character so I could try everything basically try everything that's super smart actually i was going to do that for the first playthrough but that's that's a really low amount of vigor though so you're actually yeah, i get like one shot yeah boss fights i yeah <laughs> I, I die that's the one thing i that's what retains the challenge and right. it, the thing it sucks for is pvp because mm-hmm. it's like one of the worst builds that all my stat points are unused but pvp right. is still pretty fun okay yeah i see i see yeah 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 it's interesting yeah man my build's like completely opposite <laughs> What is your so build? Bad. It's so filthy, man. But it's like not like, but in like a melee sense, not even like in terms of like, uh, like I'm not using broken magic, but like I, I have such a crazy advantage on certain things. Like it literally, I have a life steal weapon and then I have a, a talisman that steals life too. And then I have a talisman that gives me life back. Wait, wait, is that, incanta- is that just on attack? It's on attack. If I hit something, I get health. You back. get health back. But yeah. then I, there's a double. There's a double stack of it with a talisman that does the same thing as the weapon does. So it's the um, the blasphemous blade from Riker, the sword he used. Yeah, and his great rune does life steal as well. So I could triple stack it if I did his rune too. I yeah, know. I use um I use um more um God, Godric's great rune still, and then I have the hunt the um the do talisman that does passive health regen, and then I have um the blessings boon that does higher passive regen on top of that then i have the golden order which stacks attack damage and defense or something like that i think it's like it's almost like sacred oath on top of that then on top of that i have another thing that buffs the weapon when i use the bloodhounds fang which also has bleed as well oh my god <laughs> and then it goes it just goes into like a crate and then I, my stats are basically like super high faith uh high strength and high high health so your op is all fuck you're basically you got the you got the d build yeah yeah I'll, i have blood flame blade Blood Flame Blade is the only spell I use, really. It's uh, it's really good. Like, it's really good. Uh, yeah, especially with the claws. My build is basically okay. just I have bleed. Like, that's that's what I right. got. Yeah. So do you find that, like, the bleed kind of makes up for the lack of... Bleed is OP as shit. Bleed is so okay. strong. So strong True. in this game. Yeah. Uh, and enemies that you can't bleed, I'm just... I have holy claws. But other than that... Oh, I have the Moon Veil as well. The Katana. Haven't found that, but I've heard of it though. Yeah, everybody uses it. It's it's pretty good. It's just I okay. I use it when claws don't have enough range for things. Because right, that's right. and and you've done some PvP as well. Yeah, I've done. I I spent like a couple hours doing PvP, and okay, you're always going to get gang squads generally, mm-hmm. but it's still really fun because you get it's to fun. see there's so many different builds that people have. Yeah, and that's the thing. Like you can make. It's so much, compared to DS3, it's like we were talking about last time, there's so many different builds and so many different things that you can make work. Mm -hmm. Um, 
Yeah. That's cool. Some people min max. I got PDT with you sometimes. Yeah, I would, I would totally do that. And we can test maybe, things maybe, out too. How about this, guys? Like for anyone watching this right now, I guess in the comments, you can um, comment to my video if you think this is a good idea. Just maybe even say, hey, I like the idea of the PvP um, podcast. But we'll do one based on PvP after we finish the whole game. We have our late game impressions or like our final impressions. Mm -hmm. And we just literally do a multiplayer one where we have the gameplay that we have against each other. We, do, we just test a bunch of different stuff. Mm -hmm. We talk about what we like about those things. It'll be like the, the Absolver days. Yeah, exactly. That was exactly. a fun game. That was fun to do. Yeah, let us know if you want to yeah. see that. I, you know what I can't believe still? Uh, this is my strategy against you and Absolver was to just create a deck that you mm -hmm. could not react to. That yeah. was my strategy. Like, it wasn't just to outplay you. It was to create a deck. And so then mm -hmm. I thought I did that. And then you started beating me. And I was so pissed. <laughs> I was like... Yeah, that was, those were some of the most satisfying times playing yeah. multiplayer. Because that game had so much potential. Because you could make the actual character's moveset. Yeah. Which is, like, I don't think a thing that, like, existed before in a game like that fighting-wise. No. With that kind of open world, too, where you actually, you don't collect items. You collect the actual mechanics of the game, essentially. Yeah, yeah. Which is a, it was a, such a cool idea. It was I wish so they, um, cool. If they, had a, yeah. if they had, like, an established foundation that rewards people winning multiplayer and balances mm -hmm. the game, that game would have done great. But at the same time, yeah. it just they let it die it's so sad that was a fun game it, there were some balancing issues that weren't addressed quickly enough and then the server issue that happened where a lot of the players got like um about i think it was three or four days in a row where you couldn't play it oh really and it was within the first remember the first week because we had it a little bit early uh, and then i think it was the either the first or second week of release and then it was just like rip you know there wasn't any servers for a while huh yeah oh yeah it's too bad it's like the and it's then, like um, for honor as well for honor just kind of you died right yeah right right all but those fun this, games I guess the pvp the pvp so there's a lot of variety and you're saying um so you have you won quite a bit of duels in pvp yeah uh there's been a few that have disconnected have you ever got someone where you're winning and they disconnect <laughs> um uh, not no actually because i only like the only time i pvp'd was against k witty for that uh twitch rivals uh, uh, event yeah to finish and then i also had to do to actually get a point for the scavenger hunt one of the um objectives we had so it's two teams with 25 objectives i believe and whoever gets the most mm. wins is like a bingo board one of them was um invade ass a uh, invader and kill somebody and one was beat an invader so i invaded somebody and like I killed the guy, but um, yeah, like I've I've never seen anyone. Did they just, they just disappear when you disconnect? It just, the, it just says connection error, basically. It goes back. <laughs> uh, yeah, and you used to PvP in DS2. Like that's how you started, right? P that's how I made DS2 um, my PvP. Yeah, yeah, a long yeah. time ago. You think you're gonna do the same thing with Elden Ring? I'm gonna do PvP at least. Uh, I'd say once or every two weeks or once a week minimum. Yeah, at least. yeah. That's the plan, yeah. Yeah, I, and then uh, I what I want to do is a rotation of uh, speed running, challenge running, PvP, and then I really like Dead by Daylight, so I'm gonna still be playing that on the side. Who's but, your favorite killer? Oh, for DBD, um, <sighs> dude, honestly, uh, it's such a hard choice. I like Nurse, like I actually made Nurse for a little bit, mm -hmm. and then um, I switched to Wraith, and I got better at Wraith than I was at Nurse, so I've been playing Wraith quite a bit. Wraith, because okay. he he goes invisible. Yeah, yeah, I remember I used DBD to play a lot of DBD. Vertebrae. I like, oh yeah, his little. <laughs> Vertebrae yeah. with like the skull on it. Yeah, yeah that's cool. Yeah, cool. yeah, yeah. No, I like. He looks uh, really funny though. Pig. I liked pig. The pig. I haven't played the pig yet. Pigu. Um, okay. What were we talking about? We we're talking about PvP. Oh yeah, PvP, yeah. yeah. PvP. The one thing I really hope is that there's incentive to PvP. Like there's mm. something that shows some kind of progression or something because that'll make it so much more fun. Because it's one thing to invade and and win and that's great, but if there's no progression, eventually it just dies down. What we need for the PvP to really last, in my opinion, is a community of people that take it seriously. Maybe not to be like kind of like assholes about it, but more so organizing events like tournaments, mm -hmm. um, making it as competitive as possible within its own uh, set of rules mm -hmm. and um, showing people advanced mechanics in the game mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. or utilization of higher tech that like is not just basic controls. Do you think that is literally the depth to it that you need. Any of the DS2 tech that you know will transfer over to Elden Ring? So there's no animation cancels. That's like one thing that's huge with um, DS2 because if you, I mean, like fainting is not as popular because you waste stamina. But when I was playing DS2 on a more competitive level, there were some tournaments and stuff where you would recovery cancel things. So you actually cut off a lot of the frames, the animation. Mm. But if you're constantly recovery canceling things, you're pushing so many more buttons every time you're doing something mm. that it actually becomes a more te like a way more technical game. It's twice as technical to play then because you have to time the actual cancel for it to work. 
But if you don't time it properly, then you might do something you don't want to do, like attack again mm -hmm. or whatever. So there's a risk to actually trying to cancel stuff all the time, mm -hmm. but you're getting such a crazy advantage. It actually is the only way to keep up with someone also doing it too. So similar to like when you play smash at a low level and then you start doing wave dashing. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, or, you know, like someone that has one frame links down on like a, you know, a Tekken or a Street Fighter game or something like that, yeah. or parries down on them. It's like just bar, like you can't compare it. Right. So not that it would be that serious oh, shit. overall, but that reminds important. me, uh, I was supposed to message K Witty. It's Wednesday today, right? Yes. Yeah. Okay. We're going to play smash. I think. K Witty's Ganondorf is OP. <laughs> you can come to play smash if you want. I, I could, I could. Oh, actually I got it. My switch is being bored by somebody right what? now. What? You lent it yeah. out again? I did because I wasn't playing it. Man, so, come on. I knew we were going to be playing this forever. What? Well, we can like, play Smash. Okay. I was just planning to disappear into like a basement forever and just like eat saltine crackers and just lock myself up until I did every run on the planet. You have that, the, the, that powder mouth, the cotton mouth. <laughs> Dave Chappelle, like when he has like the white powder on his face. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. Oh my God. Yeah. There's the, you remember, the baby in the hood. He's like, I got a family to feed. You remember, I don't know why. <laughs> whenever I think of Dave Chappelle, I think of Dylon. Okay. Dylon? You I remember Dylon? Dylon? I can't remember I what he said. You're too close, man. You're too close. <laughs> yeah. That's funny. Yeah. Oh, man. Anyway. So, okay. So for advanced, for advanced techniques, like, so uh, recovery canceling, I'm not sure. Mm -hmm. um, reverse roll backstabbing. I don't know. Maybe. Mm -hmm. um, the other things I can think of might be like tumble buffing, but tumble buffing would be kind of cheap though, I think. Because that's like an honor code thing where some people are like, oh, you're using a buff, right? I saw one of your videos. I didn't look at it because I didn't want spoilers. But you said, there, there was there like a double buff that you did? Well, tumble buffing would let, let you buff things that are Not in DS2, in, in Elden Ring. There's one of your oh, videos. the double buff. Yeah, yeah. So you can, well, there was just early game. Something that I found was uh, you could take the golden halberd and you use the weapon art from the golden halberd. But you don't have to have it on the character anymore to actually have the effect going. So yeah. it's a body effect, right? Yeah. But you also don't have to meet requirements to use it. Well, you only have to be able to two-hand it. So if you can two-hand it, you use that buff, and then you switch to a different weapon that you do meet requirements for or you, you do want to use, and then you can also buff that weapon as well. And then any weapon that you have that has a weapon art that does a similar thing can still stack. So like um, the Grafted Blade from the Misbegotten Beast in Morn Castle, mm -hmm. that has a thing where it boosts a bunch of different um, uh, things. Or sorry, it gives you... Um, I think it gives you a higher set of attributes, like your stats go up, right? Mm -hmm. That still stacks on top of the golden halberd, I believe, which also stacks on top of other stuff. Or, for example, like if you use golden order, which is like going to boost your attack, you can stack that and the weapon effect and another buff with mm -hmm. whatever you know allows you to. So there is some crazy stacking you can do. Yeah. Okay. I didn't know that at all. Yep. I'm terrible at figuring that stuff out. Like think of it. Think of it this way: if you find golden halberd, you you can at least two hand it. Use the use the weapon art of it. Take it off. Switch back to your regular character. You, you have more attack. That's so Auto cool. Automatic. Yeah. It doesn't go away. Yeah. So. That is really yeah. cool. Okay. Mm -hmm. Now the the only other question I have for PvP is well, how big of a how big of a factor was latency in DS2? So that was based on the regional um connection. So if you were doing like within um North America, for example, if you live in North America, that's fine. Um if you're doing cross region, that was rough sometimes. Mm -hmm. So I think for tournaments, people are going to restrict it to regional. Do you think the, um, the latency in Elden Ring is going to be as good or better than DS2, or do you think it's going to be worse? I think it'll be roughly the same kind of thing as all the other games because it's player-to-player -player connection, right? There's no dedicated server. Right. So that's the only really real factor I feel that improves it a, a shit ton. Yeah. Like your ping, your ping just has to be good. The other person's ping has to be decent, and that's it. Yeah, I've had some PvP matches where I've hit the person like three mm -hmm. or four times, and it's literally five to seven seconds later and it then the character starts <laughs> they, they, they explode i think um i'm pretty sure gino posted a thing on twitter i don't know if you like, have access to it and you could show it but like it's so funny where it's like yep like this is pvp and it's just like the same kind of thing like the guy's already dead but then he keeps taking attacks and the guy's dead yeah yeah exactly yeah. what happened yeah if, <laughs> if someone could link me that then i can show it on on screen okay well that's cool i'll see if i can find it in the meantime one second yeah it's yeah. funny so that's the PvP stuff. Okay, so I guess we got to where we are in the game. And uh, both of us, so where we are. So I guess we'll go with the, the, the standard questions. Okay, well, what do you think about the game so far? To, to the point you've gotten, what do you think about the game so far? Mm -hmm. um, oh, dude, honestly, I... <sighs> 
it's it's just a 10 out of 10 first playthrough for me and i know that yeah. as i critique it more as i'm playing um the pvp and i'm playing challenge run speedruns they're all going to have different critiques for what they are yeah but it's just a sensational game like it's just such an experience that is hard to even like for me if i didn't have like timelines set for what i'm doing i would actually just forget what's going on i would just play it like literally all the time oh yeah yeah i can see that like i i have to i have to set myself like okay i'm literally just playing for like a handful of hours so even today i was going to end a little bit earlier so we could um i could eat before this start this and then you even saw i was like eating while we were like trying to start up because i'm like dude i played a little bit too much like, yeah yeah, yeah. <laughs> played a bit more than i thought i was gonna and it's like i've gotten really good at doing that but um it's just one of those games where it's like just one more all the time. just one more <laughs> just one more that's what i call it just, just one, one more. more yeah it's good yeah. good memory and if you're a just one more person you literally could consider it a drag like it's it's crazy and just one more person that's a dangerous yeah. person i am a just one more person yeah for sure. yeah um okay with, well with that I, I guess we could go one of two ways so i just thought of a question we could just we could branch out to that and then we'll go back okay. to the standard questions um have you seen all of this uh, accessibility shit going on where Elden no. Ring needs an easy mode or Elden Ring, the tutorial shouldn't be in a, in a pit and it should be more, more easy presented or like, a, you know, all there's, there's a, basically from what I can tell, there's people that are just generally happy with the game. And then there are people that generally aren't. And of the people that generally aren't, there are the people that are, signaling in a way um signaling in a way that's just like i want to have social points through controversy which is fine right. and then there's the people who are generally genuinely upset with the game for not having for example an easy mode or for not having their hand held through the game or not having certain accessibility options Right. Do they have like specific mentions of what those ideas would be that they request? Or is it just a general kind of like speculation of those or whatever? I don't know. Like it's for me, I don't really pay too much attention to it. I hear it through the periphery. Like I hear other people talking about it or other people saying things about it. Like, like should it have an easy mode? Should it have an easy debate? mode? Things like that. What do you okay, think about that? Where you are in the game now? Um. Well, so when you put an easy mode in something or even put difficulty settings in something, you're already kind of setting it up to be a certain sort of experience, right? Mm. So we could compare it to like maybe God of War because God of War was a good game, in my opinion, in terms of how well it was made. But it also had this effect where if you did give me God of War difficulty, things were just sponges. Mm -hmm. It wasn't that like the actual mechanics of the game became so sophisticated and different in terms of how it performs. It was more so just that you got kind of tired of trying to kill things. Yes. At a certain point. Or like... I saw people that did and i i played on the uh, second hardest difficulty when i did a bit of that game and it was a, it was already pretty spongy in some cases right yeah so you have to ask yourself do you want it to devolve to that on the higher end of the difficulty where it's almost like you're playing new game seven on the first playthrough with a character that shouldn't be like in there yeah. yet until you've really experienced it and then on the lower end um it's just really kind of diminishing the uniqueness of the fact that you create the difficulty by getting different items and building the character with the rpg elements so it almost kind of may, turns it more into like a standard linear sort of like movie game in, in a way to me mm -hmm. it turns it more into like a uncharted or a tomb raider or a god of war or something like that where it's like there isn't the freedom to go and do all these different things to make the experience yours it just is a set experience right mm -hmm. which the game is not made with the vision of being a set experience at all it has a set storyline mm -hmm. But you choose how you navigate it, though, like extremely to like a, like a fine level of detail. Mm -hmm. um, and with it being the most open and the biggest scale game they've done, it would completely jeopardize the um, the exploratory nature of it. Having by, an easy by, mode or something like that. Having an easy mode because then it it there's no value to any like of that exploration. Mm -hmm. So really, as other than, other than just seeing sights, but really like the actual um, sensation of accomplishment is not there yeah so right yeah. as it is it's it's doing what it does good i think it serves all all types of players with different options you have summons you have magic you have co-op you have everything uh, yeah, there's a lot of tools in place and they have so many tools to boost they, there's tunes to boost the rule or sorry tools to boost the runes, mm. not tunes to boost the rules. <laughs> yeah. And then there's uh, there's a lot of things you can do where you can co-op, you can get more uh, runes with somebody. Once you've learned a boss, again, play with someone else so you can get more runes. You literally can explore any easy area that you think you are capable of handling as slow as, as, slow as you want at whatever pace you want. But I think what there is an expectation also of how fast you should be progressing in something and you're comparing it to other experiences you've had. Mm. 
that's when you're kind of potentially shooting yourself in the foot because if you're newer to like this kind of stuff you play games that are leisurely that kind of play themselves but are relaxing or more of an escape mm -hmm. and they're not really like making you think as much or like you know have to mechanically push buttons as as, as intensely it's it's something that you have to take at a pace that's relative to your comfort level right so you don't have to actually progress every time you play mm -hmm. but i think some people love feeling like they've just like had like watched a movie every time they play or watched a tv show where it's like you just absorbed it you didn't have to do anything you just sat there right mm -hmm. and there's a lot of games that feed you they spoon feed you this one you create the experience so i mean like nothing happens unless you actually do make that progress mm -hmm. and but it gives you so many tools i think before that are handicaps in a way comparatively where before obviously there was no map because there there wasn't really a need for it now there actually is a need because there's so much stuff mm -hmm. but then even on those maps um that you see the bat map pieces you have your little checkpoints they point in the direction generally that you want to progress in mm -hmm. so they do give you indication of where to go mm -hmm. and once you make it to another one it's not so far that it takes you to get to the next one that also points you in another direction mm -hmm. and then as soon as you find one that doesn't you go back to the last one that did and you keep going so there's your linear progression there with like the main stuff and maybe it's not like a straight line maybe it's scattered but then in between that you're bound to find other things that are going to give you more strength okay so then the question would be well first question quick because i just there's some footage i just pulled up that i forgot about have you been to the scarlet rot swamp yep the bubblegum swamp with the dragon kin that's inside of it yeah what yep. the hell yep. yeah <laughs> <laughs> yeah what is that it's like people, Lake of Rot. people were trying to like tell me like uh that that was the worst place of all time i spent a bit of time there but like I found it funny at first because I was like, wait, like, how do you fight this guy without having a platform? Yeah. That was the only thing that I questioned. But it, once I found a way to do that, yeah, it was like, it's okay. no problem. It's, it's fairly yeah. empty, actually. Okay. Anyway, back to the topic. So right. question would be, do you see something that Elden Ring could do better in general and in terms of the accessibility options we were just talking about? Um, in general, better so far. Um, it would be too ambitious of, of like a task for me to even critique that, just given that like I think FromSoft outdid their expectations even on this. Right. And like it's such an achievement. It's something to be so proud of. It actually objectively on a metric level was 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 hyper successful in like a mainstream fashion, mm -hmm. like to, to such a greater level of magnitude than Sekiro, than Dark Souls 3, everything in the early uh, stages of it so mm -hmm. far with sales, mm -hmm. with pre-orders, all these different things with like player base, how many people are actually playing it. It's just so sensationally successful that it, it would be actually kind of missing the point to even critique that because what else can you do at that point? Mm -hmm. Like it speaks for itself. And in my experience, um, I wouldn't change a single thing about it. The only things that I think can be fixed at this point have nothing to do with the design of the game. It's more so the technical aspects of like it functioning better on hardware and stuff yeah, like that. That's a pretty, be pretty big thing. Yeah. If it was then, more and optimized. Then, and, and in terms of accessibility, you can, you can go that route. Like I can, you know, maybe give benefit of the doubt to someone that wants that and like play that, um, you know, that perspective. But then when you go there, it's a point of no return. You'll never get the experience that you were originally promised from the actual like true creative vision of the developer. So that's a really good point. Getting, yeah. You get you get so much fan servicing that it misses the point of what the whole it becomes hollow. To be about. Yeah, it becomes yeah. it hollow. It loses its soul, and it becomes mm. just it becomes straight fan service. It's like I've never. Also, if I ask you a question too, like mm. just based on their other games, so what was the most satisfying part of you playing a game that they made in the first place? Like, what was the first moment you're like, I want to continue playing this game? What was what was that surprise? <sighs> that's you? that's a good question. I would have to think about that. Uh, whenever, well, like my immediate thought when I think about that is. When I beat something for the first time, that was difficult, like a boss, when I beat it for the first time and it was like, oh shit, cool. Or, uh, and then you can come, you can your combine first, what that. Was your first experience? Like your very, very first impression where you kind of pissed off. You're like, what the hell is this kind of thing? With Demon like, Souls? Ever, like I ever, played just anything. Yeah. The first game I played Souls game was Demon Souls. Mm -hmm. Uh, and I don't. I was I was younger. I was not forty nine years old, but I, <laughs> I I remember like my memories from Demon Souls are actually of co op because I okay. met someone in the game who would play with me, and he was mm -hmm. a legally blind janitor who was like, "I'm proud of you." He would just tell me he was proud of me. That's uh, awesome. Yeah, it, it was cool. <laughs> me and him were friends. Um, but we would play, and I remember playing in Flame Lurker Town and trying to beat mm -hmm. Flame Lurker with him, and. At that point in time, I did not have conceptual groundwork for fairness. Like my mm -hmm. idea was I need to attack you as fast as I can. Mm -hmm. And if you attack, I can either perfect dodge or get hit. Either way, I'm I'm trying to kill you. It wasn't, okay, okay 
dodge window, punish window or positional right. or anything like that. Like that wasn't, that didn't exist in my head. I don't think it exists in a lot of people's heads, but the feeling I, I, what I think I liked about it, I don't know, man. Like that's the thing. It's so long ago. I would have to like, say. Did you have a first? Do you have a first impression of the game in general? Like the first time you turned it on and like died or something like that? No, uh, I my memory. My I don't have that memory okay. readily available. I remember playing Dark Souls one and being disappointed after Demon Souls. Oh. Okay. Okay. Yeah, I was like, this sucks. <laughs> That's fair. Yeah, yeah. yeah. And fair. then Dark Souls two, I was like, this sucks. Yeah. Um, Bloodborne, I liked though. Bloodborne, you liked, yeah. Bloodborne, I liked. DS3, I liked. Uh, okay. But at that point, like, DS3 was the first challenge run I did. Mm -hmm. And it was Soul Level 1. I had never done a Soul Level 1 run before then. And it felt really good being able to do things that I'm not supposed to do. Okay. Like, so at... And then to a similar effect, do you think when you're playing with the, the your buddy that was the janitor that you're, you're trying to do Flame Lurker, like, succeeding that eventually or however you beat that, like, was it a sense of accomplishment that kind of almost was the motive to continue playing it like or the reason you just like it like is that, is that the was that the whole maybe point it could it? be so, it could be that because it was like hey we did it and that feels good like we we did it and that feels good now let's go do the right. next one that was cool because i because i had this similar experience of demon souls being the first game and i hated it the first time i quit i was just like this is the stupidest thing ever this is the worst like most shitty made game i've ever played in my life yeah and then because I, when I get really mad at something like that level, I want to get revenge on it. I want you to get, get so, revenge. So, so my friend, I, I actually even, I mentioned this a little bit in like a story that I told before um, with, uh, I think it was with Dark Souls 1 or something else. But yeah. basically the next day I went back to my buddy's house. He owned the game at the time because we went to go find a game we could play multiplayer wise. Um, I got something different and took it back and got Demon Souls the next day because I was like, dude, like I want to play this game again. He already had it. So once me and him made it through phalanx like the arch the first arch yeah and we beat phalanx we're like okay like we did we literally beat the boss so like we have to continue playing the game now it's possible right mm -hmm. but we thought it was impossible we were just like what like and, and also all the things we were told by our friends that had played it they're like oh like that's just a stupid game don't play it. it's just way too hard like, yeah it, they're, they're, they're like they didn't even like try to like make it appealing for people it's just made to be hard and i was like oh okay yeah which wasn't really the point but i think that that was what media was picking up on in some extent and some you know some casual players of games were trying to you know figure out what's the point of it right but miyazaki when he made it he wanted it to be like, kind of like what you said like it's just satisfying the fact you guys figured it out you did it and that there's this sense of accomplishment right so i got that sense of accomplishment and mm -hmm. i kept playing it and that's the crack I think, I think essentially it's normal to be frustrated where you're like why isn't there accessibility settings mm -hmm. But as soon as you give it a chance and you try your best to use all your options that you have and, and use different strategies mm. and think, you know, more more expansively than just like, I'm going to throw myself at it immediately. And if it doesn't work, I'm just going to quit. Right. Yeah. And you get the sense of accomplishment and then it actually changes your perspective because you're going to want to continue to play it at least at face value. If you like the genre and you like the concept they're going for the story, that's it. Mm -hmm. I truly believe that. Yeah. Uh, that's that's a really that's, interesting concept because yeah. that's something that I think people do not intuitively understand and you can't you can't fully until you give it that chance I yeah think. and even if you explain yeah. it to someone and they understand it intellectually like they're like okay well fine i'm supposed to do this and do this i don't think you can actually appreciate it until you have that experience until mm -hmm. you understand it experientially and that's something that actually happens in a lot of different situations where right. people will prejudge something or develop opinions or criticisms based on something that they haven't given a chance if that makes sense like uh oh like this game needs easy mode this game needs this and it's like well have you tried to struggle against this and figure out a way around it that suits you and they'll be like right. well no i didn't because i automatically dismissed it because i didn't get through it like on my first try um i think that a lot of the judgments can be early too where you know it's hard to even like for me like people are asking me questions this is just an example but relates to the the theme but they're like oh like what would you say is the best build for this or the bet like what's the best weapon in the game i'm like i haven't found it yet because i haven't beaten it but i can i can try to guess like based on what i have known from playing it but i haven't even grasped the whole thing so once i actually finish it even the opinions i have now could change mm -hmm. so like it's always possibly subject to change because it's not fully grasped yet 
Mm, I think right, and that's it's the same thing on a basic level. It's like if you want the accessibility options, have you grasped the full concept yet? Because it would be fair to say if you actually beat it or you did get through like quite a bit and then said that, okay, maybe you're not feeling it at that point. But if it's very preliminary, it's hard to actually even have a grasp on what you're trying to quantify, right? Oh yeah, yeah, yeah. and I think yeah. I think that's something that's that's like a it's like a I, the only word I can think of is pandemic, which is the wrong word, but it's like a. People nowadays, I think because of the social atmosphere, are very quick to judge things and put things into boxes, mm -hmm. but that doesn't actually serve them or anybody else. So if they if they approach things with more of an open mind of, well, how can I make this fun rather than this isn't fun because, or how can I make, how can I enjoy, how can I find a way to enjoy this rather than I don't enjoy this? Mm -hmm. um, I think things would be closer to reality than they are. Uh, and I think people would see things a little bit better than they, they do. And we wouldn't have a lot of problems we have today. Um, yeah. But I think with the game, it's, it's, it's actually a masterpiece in itself just for them not compromising the integrity of their vision. Yes. And, and, and they, they can easily say that they've, they've enticed people that were their previous audience that are hardcore and new people at the same time yeah. on a really, really equal scale, which is huge. Yeah. It's such a hard thing to do because you're really only good. You're going to alienate people regardless, either way you spin it. No matter what, no matter what. Such a good balance they went for, I think. Yeah, I think so too. So. Man, this, <laughs> this attack, the attack where Astel teleports and then swoops down and eats you. God, that was oh, yeah, terrifying. Right. He grabs you. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah. <laughs> yeah okay. Well, on, on that, uh, on that topic, there's also one thing. So I do have a criticism of the game. Right. Um, and this is just like, it's a, it's something CBD said, and I agree with, that I don't mind there being a lot of bosses in the game. Um, and I understand the notion of, well, if you're a player who uses summons, double bosses can be fun, I guess. But for me... When I see a double boss, like for example, the double gargoyle, or I don't think you fought this one yet, but there's a triple boss where it's the triple crystal things with scarlet rot. It's some, it's in some dungeon somewhere. Yeah. Yeah. It's, it's a, it's for me, it's like not even fun. It's like, I don't want to do this. And mm -hmm. for me, there's no merit in even doing it because right. double bosses and triple bosses, what it consists of is you have to wait for every single enemy to have attacked and not be in a state where they can punish you. And then right, once yeah. that happens, you can punish once. And then it's much more selective openings, basically. Yeah. Yeah. And then you wait and make sure you're not in any position where you can get roll caught or caught positionally. And that's the entire fight. Right. Mm -hmm. It's not optimization. It's just patience. See, like for that, just before you continue, I wanted to actually maybe take it from the perspective of they maybe kept that in thinking the same thing you said, but then realizing, hey, people at this point might have gotten some really good equipment. Yeah. And maybe they can just, maybe they can take out the first guy like quickly. So they, they had to, you know, do something more than just making it one or two of them, because even that in itself could be a little redundant on the fact there's already dungeons with single bosses that you could find later. So they're like, oh, we got to make something super silly, like just because there's going to be people that are silly like, with, their, with their setup on this. And I know it's not necessarily the best way for difficulty um, modulation because you could easily just take <laughs> mechanics and make them harder. You can make a more unique enemy again. Mm -hmm. But with the resources they put into it and how big the scale of the game is, I, I, it makes me laugh and it makes me kind of happy in a different way to see them do silly things like that once in a while. Mm -hmm. I just but wonder. I'm also more lighthearted with it. I don't really care too much. I, about, I wonder you know, if, the if, if they're going for difficulty, let's say they just needed a difficulty spike for people who are let's say they're overpowered at this point and they, they aren't having too much trouble with single bosses, which is, I, I, what would be an alternative way to do that? That would be my question because when I see double bosses and it's like, well, okay, like, look, this will be harder, but we're assuming that you can kill one boss really quick. It's like, for me, that seems like there must be a better way to make something. It seems lazy to me. And I'm not, uh, this game is massive. So I'm not saying mm -hmm. they are lazy um, because I don't think they that are. That aspect can be can, basically handled differently to have a higher quality. I think know, they could have handled that differently for sure because right. bosses where, yeah, bosses like Radon, very mm -hmm. rewarding to do, super rewarding to do. I was very happy. I learned the boss. I can execute it very well. I have a certain level of, of mastery over the boss. Bosses like... Uh, 
the Crucible Knight and the Misbegotten Warrior in Redmain Castle when I was underleveled, uh, even though that took six hours, I did it, but I feel so much better about Radon than I do about mm-hmm. those two boss fights. Like, there's so much more value. I agree, yeah. yeah. And it's the same thing for me. Like, there's going to be some things that they, they get put in a different category, and I would call them mini dungeon bosses. Mm-hmm. And there's a couple that are really cool. Okay. But... Yeah, yeah. Like, like what? Um, when they repeated Tree Spirit, but they did Scarlet Rot on that, that was awesome. Yeah, yeah. Um, there, there's one that I just did. Um, it's like a, it's called a, uh, what is it? Uh, it's, oh, it's in a place you haven't been to yet, but I'm trying to think of the actual name of the creature. It's a really, it, it's the hardest basic enemy I've found so far in terms of being like super offensive that you can't backstab them either. And they, they um, have a assassin. Like Black, black, black assassins. Are they? Are those the, the ones? I don't know if they're. No, no, they're like Zamor Z- Z- beasts or something like that, or, or like whatever. They have like hooks, I think, and they they spin. They kind of like act like a pontiff knight sort of, but like on the crack. Like it's insane. Are they, they ice? Frost. Yes, ice. Oh, so is is that the thing? Yeah, they have frost. No, it's they not have the thing. AOE ex- yeah. They have an explosion that's like close range. That's almost immediate when like with ice. They have an ice like um like kind of free frida attack yeah they have one of the frida attacks they jump across the map and yeah. they spin and do all these things and then this one in this particular um dungeon it actually buffed its weapon as well and then had like an effect around it for like a while yeah that it put on as it was doing the other aoes mm-hmm. and that was that was probably one of the coolest ones so far and i really like that as a basic enemy but when you fight two of them at once you actually have to like you, you have to run away like you can't just like be in there mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. i've it's, never it's, fought two that sounds terrifying yeah, I don't yeah. know if you found them anywhere else, but they are probably the Zamor Knights. Yeah, I think they're my favorite uh, enemies so far. Okay, like a basic enemy. Cool. Yeah. You know what? They're really enemies cool. I hate the the bitches on the ants with the whips. <laughs> I found it funny that like there was one fighting another ant. Did you see that? No. Like, there was an yeah. ant. There was an ant without a person on it, and then there was one with a person. And the person was whipping the. other They're whipping that. That poor yeah, ant. No, was taming yeah, it. Out. Yeah. Yeah. Poor Anthony. Anthony. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Yeah, okay. Um, well, we'll do one, one more question because we're we're getting there. Uh, what do you think about the no-hit runs? I haven't seen them yet, but I heard that Gino got his, and I heard that um, Shinobi. Shinobi. Or no, Bushido. 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 Yeah. Not Shinobi, Bushido. But Bushido. Bushido was the first. Yeah. So I haven't watched them either. I don't know much about them other than uh, Kamehameha. Is there a Kamehameha attack? Yeah. So, you know, in the carry-on manner, the one with all the fingers... The the carry many. There's a sword. I don't know if you got it. The sword of night and flame. Oh, so they're using that weapon for that run. I think so. But the Kamehameha just of that sword. Mm -hmm. I think that's what they're using. Again, I I watched one boss fight and it was Radon. And I'm Mm -hmm. assuming this is what was happening. I don't know for sure because I don't want to spoil the game. Um, But yeah, they would just back up and Kamehameha it. And uh, it didn't look too difficult. The, The question is like, well, this is a pretty broad topic. So mm-hmm. for me, a no hit run is meant to have a standard difficulty, like, mm-hmm. and it, it's rewarding because you did something very difficult. And of course, uh, Gino is incredibly skilled. So I don't think I think he got this on his first day. So I'm not I'm not down talking Gino. I think Gino's the most skilled runner out of them all, to be honest. Right. Um, but the question would be, or not the question. It's like. It's weird. It's just weird. What no hit runs used to be when it was back in the DS3 days when we were like, okay, no magic, no bows, no this, no that. We're going to put stipulations on. Now it's just like, okay, you just need to finish the game as fast as you can, no hit, so that you can get an article about you. I think that's the mentality now. And it kind of takes away from the spirit of it, which is it's supposed to be difficult. Like it's supposed to be hard and you're supposed to figure out ways to do it. I think CBD is starting the melee only no hit now. That's cool. What do you, what do you think about that? So, okay, we had this discussion in my chat a couple of times and I was saying, so the whole thing with like, you know, trying to do it as quick as possible, even people uh, claiming that they saw some streamers rush their first playthrough. So I looked at it in different categories. So I was mm-hmm. like, you could have evidently played a certain amount of hours, not have the intention to rush it, beat the game. And then your immediate intention is to just jump into runs so you can get it because that's just naturally what you do. And then there can be the person that literally just starts practicing stuff before they've even beaten the game or like, doing all the research they can, like testing things at the same time as playing rushes it and then they literally try to like get the run before anyone else for the sake of doing that Mm -hmm. because they want to be the first person Mm -hmm. and i think that there's some people that haven't made a name for themselves in like content yet like and that's going to be their shoot their foot in the door basically Mm -hmm. and i totally support people doing that and think it's like cool that they're actually even trying to go for it and compete 
Um, but at the same time, what you're saying with like balancing it as a standard difficulty, that's something where I've always believed whatever you do is taken as it is. So like, you can't fake it, right? Like it's, you can't, you can't like try to like touch it up and say like, you know, you can make a crazy title, but like you, people have to watch what you did and see it for what it is. Like, mm -hmm. it's just the truth. If you did it this way, you did it this way. If you did it that way, it's like a, in the trilogy, people are like, oh, like you cheese prince's face too, by like, um, you know, making them, them come to the fog gate. Yeah. And I'm like dude, I'm doing a run with three games back to back. Like, of course I'm going to do that. I don't want to give myself like, I'm, I'm not trying to flex on anybody here. I'm literally just trying to be efficient with my goal mm -hmm. because the goal is already pretty hard. So like, mm -hmm. but when it's like, just for the sake of, oh, it's like low hanging fruit right away to go for in that, then again, it can only be taken at face value. So when CBD does his run with the melee, it's going to be received differently, regardless of if it gets an article or more views, the people that do watch that will interpret it as a different run. Mm -hmm. That's my, that's my, and then it's confusing because the title will be the same. That's, that's the well, thing. Like I, I agree with that. Out. I agree with that completely. But then yeah. you have to think Elden Ring has such a massive audience that there are going to be people who don't know the difference between the runs. They don't know the difference between melee only and not melee only, like the, the Kamehameha beam or whatever, a Horfrost stomp, whatever it might be. Um, right. They're not going to know the difference and they're going to equate the two. And it's like, I, for me, I personally don't care. I'll get, I'll do a run. Whatever run I do is whatever run I do. Um, it'll probably be melee only if I do one. But I can see frustration in people. Like it was the whole thing where how speedrunners were bitter or no hit runners were bitter with the previous games. I can see sources of bitterness coming from people not knowing the difference between two runs of different skill levels with the same name. So melee mm -hmm. only no hit versus no hit. What's the difference? I don't know. They're both amazing and they probably both are. One is definitely much difficult, much more difficult than the other, I would assume. Um, but that difficulty is not readily available to be observed by someone who is not well-versed in these, or I guess who doesn't have a basic knowledge of these things in the first place. Right. Actually a really good example to even expand on um, what you just said with like not knowing the difference and all that. Um, so even to this day, when I did zero damage, you know, the first time and I did all those other runs and even now if I do zero damage, there's still people even just realizing the moment that I do it nowadays like, oh, that's actually different than what Hob did, or that's actually a different run. Mm -hmm. Like, oh, that's harder. Like, oh, that's actually like really hard compared to it. Like, depending on which game you're doing, mm -hmm. and they're like, oh shit. And it's because they're not expected to have to actually do the research to figure that out because at a certain point you're just doing it for yourself. And that and that's kind of where I'm at where I don't care to like try to um, you know, like vigorously or aggressively inform everyone that it is completely different in the title or anything. It's just titled exactly what it is, and that's it. Mm -hmm. And that, and like if you if you are actually uh, you know you're inspecting well enough to figure out that it actually is a different thing, and there is a disadvantage versus the one versus the other, um, you know that's cool. But it is unfortunate though that like there's no agreed upon standard to kind of make things more clear. And I think at a certain point too in the timeline, at least the good thing about this is like early on CBD is establishing a different type of route for it. Mm -hmm. And it's not happening so late that everyone just recognizes it as, Oh, that was like the route that people were doing before, but then they have to actually really pay attention to do it because some people just click that stuff because of the title, it's not even necessarily that yeah. they, they do watch every part of it. Yeah. 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 You know, how many, you have to think of even just with a video in general, like if you have a 20 minute video, you could easily skip through it and watch five minutes. Like your average watch time for it might not be 20 minutes for a 20 minute video. It might be five minutes. Yeah. 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 Same thing for one, one minute video it could uh, be or an seconds, embedded article. Seconds. Like there's all sorts of things. I, I guess what it points to is it points to the frustration that the, well, I, I guess, so the framework would be runs in terms of difficulty the more impressive they are, the more watched they would be. That is the the assumption that is not true. So if you have a no hit soul level one, uh, no bonfire, no upgrades, no infusions, theoretically that should be more popular than just a no hit. Theoretically, but theoretically, yeah, yeah. But when it comes down to it, that's not true at all. Um, it is true mm -hmm. to an extent, but the difficulty is only one factor in how popular something is. And so people can even think that they they like things because they are more difficult and that's why they watch things. But the truth right. is that no, that's only one factor and you're missing the other five that actually allows you to enjoy this video or puts this video in front of your face. And so 
what I would say is, is yeah, it just comes down to the frustration with that because ideally if you're doing no hit runs or you're, you're dedicating your time to these things um, and you're putting yourself like, for example, would you rather do a no hit run of a single game or a God run? And it's like, well, you'd rather do a no hit run because that's difficult. That's time consuming. And a God run is fucking batshit crazy. Uh, it'll, it'll, it'll take so much time. Now imagine if the God run got less views than the no hit run. It's like, that's a little, it will. yeah, it will. That's, 100%. that's a frustrating thing. I, pr- I have proof. I'm actually making a video about that too, to like go more in depth with it because there was a thread where someone was saying like, it, like all this stuff's not real and no one actually really enjoys challenging themselves. The people are just kidding, like fooling themselves and doing it for views and revenue. But I was like, the the actual business scheme of trying to do like a long-term three month run that literally has to catch up with like I said someone could start a channel at the beginning of me doing a god run and by the time I'm done it they could make more revenue than I can from a fresh way YouTube more. channel. Oh way more way yeah, more yeah. easily way especially more. if they have a good if especially if they understand the back end of the channel as well as I understand my content. Yeah. It's no competition. It's such a long game in terms of like, or a long form thing. And, and to even catch up with all that time you spent, you could have done so many more things. It's really a personal challenge at that point. It's just something you like to do. And um, there's actually uh, like something I just wanted to go back on that you said, where it's like the perception of it, you'd think it's, it would be harder or whatever. People like Ray Dimitri, for example, awesome dude. Awesome yeah. Content yeah, 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 I was gonna bring him up. Um, but because Ray Dimitri exists, even before all this other stuff, you see one of his videos and then you're like, but Ray Dimitri did that. And it's like, but he didn't play the game though. He only went into boss fights and did these things. He, he developed be, a build to he, one shot. He, yeah. He developed a build and then individually loaded into each thing. He didn't like run from a fresh save from beginning to credits, do a full playthrough and do all that. Mm-hmm. So then, but, but you don't have, but people might just assume already because he already had set a standard of being so popular yeah. that people like Ongball, Ongball's really good at Sekiro mm-hmm. and he does the gauntlets of strength. He just did like a gauntlet of strength, m- multiple bosses, um, you know, no damage, whatever he's, they're both really skilled, but like they do different things, but because it's so popular, it's like it, it overshadows the actual meaning behind what you're doing mm-hmm. a little bit. Mm-hmm. And then the reception is not proportioned to what you think. So when people say like, Oh, like doing that's literally just for attention. It's like, it's actually the worst thing you can do for attention. You have such a better chance at like being successful, not doing that kind of stuff. Oh yeah. Yeah, yeah. Play modded runs, do, do discussion videos or like commentaries, make yeah. more videos, make, um, you know, content on your channel where you can pump out a lot of things frequently. And yeah. that's just, that's even if it's less popular per thing, it's way better of a strategy. Yes. Way better. Yeah. If you're going to so try and get popular over banging your head against the wall which is what a lot of these runs are like a ton yeah. of them it's it's just reiteration of reiteration or reiteration you have to really love it I think, you have to point. really love it so you have to enjoy it for yeah. one and if you don't enjoy it well you're in a world of of i guess resentment but mm-hmm. even if you manage to do it there is and you think it's going to be successful there are so many factors that go into it that uh how would i say this just because it's hard doesn't mean it's going to be successful. In fact, so many other things that might be out of your control have to line up with that initial thing in order for mm-hmm. it to work. So it comes down to effort management and time management. And it's like, is this, like, I can I can do, a, a, well, it's probably going to be the God Run 3 now, where it's going to be Elden Ring, Sekiro, and then... So yeah, all the, all those games. It's a mouthful at this point. That's yeah, games. yeah, <laughs> one for every day of the week. Essentially, yeah, <laughs> it's like okay, I I can do that. Like I could do that. I could dedicate. I probably would take over a year to do because you need to drill that into your body. But the cost for it would be high, and the rate of return for it would probably, very probably, not be worth it. It's actually going to get even smaller too. The more time goes on, for two reasons, because of just the um, you know. The time period, the the, um, the time and place, mm. just then the relevance of the event in history now, and the fact there's saturation. Yep. And on top of that, the actual effort load in in how long it takes you is going to keep extending because of how hard it is. Yeah. So, and that's what I, I realized that like early enough, luckily to be like, I actually just really like making content, dude. And like, I actually want to do different things. I want to speed run. I want to do challenges and still obviously like do hardcore stuff, but I also want to do like stuff that's fun too. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Yeah. You yeah. Know? Yeah. And, like, yeah I, I like, I like editing and I like making videos and I like collaborating with people. So I'm like, let's just focus on like a mixture of everything because the smarter strategy is actually like learn, do your homework on platforms, learn how they work, yeah. become better at like doing like social media overall. Yeah. 
in the time you're also doing those other things and don't like put all the chips in one bag of that yeah. ultimately. So no matter how it turns out, I think um, it's really cool that the like CBD, like he's going for one that's a bit different. I think it's really cool that Gino did his run with that um, weapon you were talking about. And I think it's yeah. amazing Bushido got the first run that early into the release of the game. I think Gino and him were like hours apart. I don't know for sure. The, the only thing I worry about is people arguing with each other over what is what and what's good, what's not. And like setting these standards that aren't even also playing the games yet have like not seen the timeline of this and know the real like like have a real understanding of what like you know how it's valued right because we just basically ass essentially like broke that down yeah so essentially just enjoy what you do and do what, enjoy you, do. what you do and that's it like, because, yeah. like the controversy and the arguing over like what is cool what's not it doesn't matter at that point you know you know what i think it is i think it's i, I think it i think there's always a component of status in everything i think there's always people are just wired to create or recognize status in different areas and that's what leads to a bunch of things but that's that's yeah. that's a that's a different conversation um well to put it to put it quickly right before you end i guess it's mm. just um think of it this way the less investment you have in something the less information you have the quicker the time frame you have to judge or like have to put a label on it the less you're going to put emphasis on how um you know it really operates and mainly just on what, what's the first impression. Mm -hmm. Actually, That's yeah, it. just, uh, I don't know if you've seen those videos. I've been making new videos and Sajid has been editing them for me. He's a really good editor. Um, okay. And out of all the content, well, maybe not all the content, out of, well, out of all the edited content I made, these, I, I really like making these. I do a script, I read it out, we get gameplay, we put it all together. It's like curated content. Um, mm -hmm. And I've never really made that before. And it's, it's, it's like, I actually, I think I really like making it. Anyway, we've done about an hour and a half-ish. Like I said, yeah. we would. Uh, anything before? Well, let's do a rapid fire question. Let's do that. Okay. Rapid fire okay. questions. Answer the first thing that comes to mind. I'll, I'll ask you whatever comes to my head and then you, you do me and then we're good. Okay. Okay. Favorite boss so far? Um, Morgoth. Favorite weapon? Um, the Blasphemous Blade. Or actually, no. You know what? Bloodhound and Blasphemous. It's a double answer. Okay. Fair enough. Um, yeah. Favorite NPC quest? Ronnie's quest line. Favorite NPC? Um, Blaith or Blade. Oh, yeah. 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 Uh, favorite enemy? Um, the Zamor Knight. Okay. Favorite OST? Uh, ooh, that's a that's a tough one. Honestly, Astil's ST, uh, OST was my favorite. Oh, I don't think I remember it. Okay. Favorite yeah. general area of the game? Um, dude, honestly, Lando. The capital. The capital. Okay. And. So far, yeah. Last question would be what you want to see moving forward with Elden Ring. Very general question. I want to see like um, the PvP community um, in full effect, like a lot of support long term for PvP, because I feel like that actually is even more important because we already know people are going to do challenge runs. We already know people are going to speed run it. Yeah. But we need PvP to be a big thing in the game again, I think. Okay. Because it's going to keep it alive, like from a different perspective. And I think if people have enough interest in that, there's streamers that can just sustain off of that kind of stuff. Yeah. I mean, it's good news for people that just dip into it, but it also keeps the directory a lot more alive. So I think long term, that's, that's true. Yeah. We'll, we'll have to worry about again. that in a year again, huh? Mm -hmm. We're getting old, Squilla. Um, <laughs> <laughs> I can't worry about that anymore. Okay. Back in my yeah. day, I used to play. Yeah. You remember when it was just the three of us back then? We I had I rules and stuff. That, yeah. that was fun talking about that earlier it's yeah. different now man um okay well that's, that's it anything to say to the people anymore anything you got coming up we're we gonna do another one of these i'm guessing oh okay so something to announce elden ring rap video cool <laughs> great yeah elden ring rap the music's recorded is it like is it as good as hitless in this bitch Oh, dude, it's different than that. <laughs> <laughs> you'll hear it. You'll be able to, you'll be able to, you're going to get the first sneak peek of the, right, yeah. this, the second last iteration before it gets mastered. Yeah. Um, but yeah, it's um, underground 90s style rap uh, with a beat that's based on the game. Basically, it's just kind of manu manufactured. What does that mean? Sega. Underground 90s style? Is that like iced tea? It's just going to be like, it's not going to be like trap beats, mumble raps or yeah. anything that's like modern. It's very, very, <laughs> more, like, very yeah. huge on the ly lyricism. Yeah. Lots of, lots of lyrics, lots of bars, lots of flow, okay. lots of execution. Yeah not a lot of um just you know vibes where you're just chilling but more so like it's like a beat down aggressive kind of you know so oh i'm excited for this now it's cool and yeah. then um yeah the beats are completely original made by um someone in my community that i also i'm a really big fan of that has a cool band um named fishbuck and then fishbuck uh, what's his name fishbuck fishbuck not the oh that's his name or that's the band's name 
Well, oh, the band's name. I can I can send you the band after the information. I don't know if he wants me. Okay, playing okay, that's whatever, that's fair. Uh, yeah, he, but he's also a producer too. He produces a lot of different artists and everything. He's really cool. And then um, Calculus as well, who has been a long time supporter of my community. He also had, was a battle rapper in the '90s with a Q. He, Calculus he, with a Q. Oh yeah, I know yeah, him. You know yeah, him yeah, yeah, I do. Yeah, he has he has a he has like hundreds of songs released like on his reverb and a bunch of different pages. He, he YouTube videos. He is a really good rapper. He's one of the best I know. And uh yeah. we, we made it happen. So that's how coming up a guitar cover of um the OST of the main song when you start up the game for me, classical style. Might throw in some electric guitar. We'll see. Uh and then um just discussion videos, more podcast episodes, challenge runs, uh PvP and everything you could possibly imagine. Yeah. So pretty cool man yeah <laughs> great so yeah i guess we'll do one of one of one of these eventually what in another week or something we'll probably be done in i'm gonna guess we're probably gonna finish the game in another week or so i'm thinking yeah it'll take at least another handful of days for me to finish because i someone was telling me i'm, I'm about 70 percent way done to where i've finished yeah. off today yeah i have no so. idea well if i'm 50 50 maybe it's gonna be another two weeks I'm guessing 60 for you, considering you did some, some things I haven't seen yet, but then you haven't done the capital yet. So about 60% for you, maybe 50%. Yeah. I, yeah. Oh, yeah. No, it's just main story wise. Yeah. Main story wise. Right? Yeah. yeah. One thing, well, also, uh, one thing you should do, do the Fia quest, do Booba Lady, which reminds me, I have, I, have, I have a new video out called Secret of Booba Hug. So <laughs> I saw that title and I was laughing yeah. so hard. I was like, what is this, man? <laughs> yeah, if you haven't watched it yet, uh, I it think it's hug. a great video. So G's edited it. He did a good job. And you could find out the secret of the booba hug. Okay, that's good. Right. Anything else? Twitch.tv slash Skula Killer. YouTube.com yeah. slash Dark Demon Daddy Skula Deluxe. <laughs> Rap God. Cheeto oh, Bro. Cheeto Bro. Uh, I yeah, I know. I couldn't figure. I, I couldn't think of guys. anything else. Okay. Blood bullets. That's what you. That's your. That's your app name. Yeah. Blood bullets. How about a letter? Yeah. <laughs> yeah. 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 I still remember that. Okay. Cool. Squirrel. K Dub Shrug. K Dub Shrug. I gotta message him. I think we're supposed to do something tonight. I reminded you. There we go. Yeah. Thank you for that. I forgot about that. I still have to eat, as well. Okay. Okay. Well, thank you for watching, guys. Appreciate it. Thank you, everybody. Hope you enjoyed. Uh, Make sure you leave a comment of your favorite moment in the game so far in the in the comments of the video if you watched on my channel. And um, Frost's information will be linked below his stream. And uh, I'll link his YouTube as well this time if you want to see his videos. Mm -hmm. We'll see you next time. Yeah, I'll put some in here. If you have any questions for us for next time that we didn't ask this time, let us know. Otherwise, I guess we'll see you later.